apps put it on uh, click on they gonna have something where you say explore nearby click that and then click uh, outdoors see photos then click outdoor and then you can move around what area you want it to change to and you see the Alamo style architecture Another thing I like to look for too is plaza. Use the word plaza to um, like this. <coughs> then click the name at the bottom right. on it something I want to show in this area Castles. You can use words like Castillo. Castillo was, means castle. <coughs> Castillo, Castillo. <coughs> Hope I sound clear on this one, but I'm gonna try to speak up. Let me move it. <laughs> I'm looking for the leggy. Somewhere in Brazil. I don't waste too much time. We got a lot to go through. In this one, part two, the Mira Mamolians. We're going to um, try to identify who and what that was. We'll put some names and dates. <coughs> To the full, to the full front. Okay. So you see how to do that. They're gonna always change. You see them, them squares. It's gonna change the map when you move your map around. Okay. Let's begin. Back to the maps. Okay. So we use these terms and these maps when we go to these stories. Going back and forth. Let's get a little bit more into where these maps come from. The researcher. We're the researchers right now. But, yeah, I give props to the Duchess. decided to tell the truth. Let's get into it. This is our queen, he was a tribal ruler, and um, they call him Zakwe. And we're dealing with Zakwe's uh, different terms, um, Kakikwe, um, Sharife. And this, in the, in the original uh, Spanish documents, we're going to see Sharife, but remember that's still the Kakakwe or Zakwe on the side. And in our narratives, 
Wikipedia. The some of them, um, they've been uh, known as horseback riders, just like we had in uh, the vaqueros or cowboys in North America. They were called the conches, not the paunches, the latter paunches, which is related to the conches of the canaries in Morocco. It's in the museum in Argentina. Argentina. And inside this museum, where I get this from, I find the back one of the, uh, under a window, a wall we got this. <laughs> in the same museum. To so see these afro Brazilians or Afro-Argentinians and stuff like that, is to wipe them out of history, mentally because we already know we related to the people on the continent called Africa. But political geography in these modern times will suggest that you been brought here by way through them. To say you have no ancient relations to this land. So no inheritance, simple as that. But yet, everything I find down there is definitely connected to some ancient Moorish history, as we see seen uh, <coughs> Got fine silk. and Brazil, Mina. <laughs> what was going on, they've been, they've been hunting areas in Brazil and they've been, and what it is, confused the world, think they've been talking about the West African African kingdoms and the Northwest African kingdoms, stuff like that, Libya and stuff like that, Sudan. <laughs> we will get into the story. of the Indies were programmed in this building. Which is very late in this game. Okay, let's deal with what she had to deal with during this research. The Columbia myth has been treated so far for the Duchess. The matter of Columbus was nothing more than a continuity of a movement that began with Alfonso X, the wise, and he kicked off the, uh, the war against the Muslims of Spain, or Moors, he, the one who started the conquista. To gain control of the American gold mines, and that been the whole point. <laughs> Even in Spain, all that history ain't got nothing to do with really Spain. It all got to do with what they found in America, okay? in competition with Portugal and the other nations, and especially with the Muslims who were under the authority of the Sharife of Morocco, who we're talking about our side, and who were already there before the arrival of Columbus. But we're really talking about both sides, right? These are been on both sides. 
and that's how I've been able to been able easier for Charles to. He didn't really had to change much because we're dealing with the Mira Mamolians who ain't really look at like they from here or they from here. They've been from here, <laughs> the whole planet. They had a different idea where they've been from. They've been from a mix of what's been. The, the ocean ain't really had nothing to do with it in their mind. <laughs> Just because the ocean is in the middle, they didn't look at it as a different place, if, if that makes sense. So the early Spanish, the only Moors who started to deal with the Spanish thing, the Christian thing, they, they stopped dealing with the world like that too, at the beginning. So a lot of them ain't really been delivered, just been like our misunderstanding of things from that time. I trying to see if the part to the land of the, I saw it on there somewhere. The land of the pouches right there, Tierra de Pouches. So they've been, they've been all over this. I think like that's where you put the cattle right there, because they've been the masters of that cattle going back to ancient Mari and Egypt and stuff like that. And a lot of people, they they can trace them through that. So, older version how the Spanish just saw it. <laughs> that whole thing been making it in them. Every place that they ain't had registered under the Sharifi. But here we got 1812 fairs and we got the 1276 fairs. <laughs> Establishments. Okay. And they say who were already there before the arrival of Columbus, of course. That goes without saying in this research. And this how Kikwe were looking North America. <coughs> Moriani. Which is me and Lord, Master, God, you already know from the last two years. Carlos V also did the same in 1536 with the maps. So even going up further or along, we got Carlos C continuing with the hiding of the gold mines. Protestant, there was a reason for that. At the time, the Protestant Reformation was taking place at a large part of the fair that existed toward the Catholic Church have been lost. So by now, by not respecting the states, the commitments sponsored by the church, which had divided the dominions of America between the Spanish and the Portuguese crowns, the only argument left to them to keep the American goal is the moral force granted by the discovery. And therefore it was necessary to erase any trace that existed previously that contradicted that version. And we're dealing with that today. Even subconsciously, we deal with that because people don't know the narrative that she find out about the holy wars that have been going on over there, over here. <laughs> and on this part, I I take this part out the interview with her when she say it much remains to be investigated and that is true because a lot of stuff I find just by going through some of the um, sources she put in there. I have not used, she said she didn't even use 50% of the documentation that she get. She says more in England, in Portugal, in the Nordic countries, in Italy. And there is still much to do to put the story in place. Just to know what you're dealing with, right? She's this is what she's been dealing with. She says some documents that were considered lost are cataloged. Other documents which were the same had the same number. Specifically one that referred to Columbus. Interest interestingly, there is an annotation, be careful written on it. <laughs> 
It was also able to get some documents through other researchers. She was that was she would also be able to do. At this moment, if I ask the Mancas or other national or another national file for a document, they don't provide it to her, and they even hurt her with for the interest. I have received some threats later, so that was she been getting threats, but that has not prevented her from moving forward. Probably also because of the refusal to accept that in the Middle Ages the Spaniards were not as linked to the Catholicism as they wanted to be believed. So she, you know, she been, what she been talking about is like those those morals who they get wiped out of history based off the fact that they define a lot of them as Muslims and Islamic uh, morals and definitions that we get today, but. A lot of them been dealing with the Christianity side too, but they would be like Moorish and like what we say phenotype, as we if we want to put it that way. <laughs> Dark skinned people, so but they've been Spanish, Spaniards, but you you know, Hispanians from Hispania. We going back to the ancient times. <clears throat> Be full seven and then we'll get into that. If we take the documents from the Middle Ages, we see this was not so. There were many forced converts who were actually Muslim or hidden Jews in 1465. Henry the Fourth, who had just had a small war, issued a sentence. That meant for the first time a modification of the jurisdiction ordering Muslim and Jews to be confined in ghettos, to wear signs in their clothes, to abandon their offices, and to have it done in, have it done inquisition against converts who did not live as Christians. So we just getting an idea in fourteen sixty five we starting the the race thing. That's how the race thing come about with us over here too, based off this Right here. You can see how they did the same thing, made us abandon our offices, could find us the ghettos today in America. The result was that the Cortez last used the right to call themselves. The Cortez last used the right to call themselves. So even the Cortez, the. <laughs> Original families of the Cortes in, in old Spain been um, under Muslim, Islamic things, practices and stuff. Had to hide it. Now they got. I have you thinking us the. You start to see the codes start to come in the black codes and the black laws. So if you correlate it, you got the dioceses and all the Roman um, jurisdictions in North America and the cities that we in and. It's the same thing. They just ain't using terms like Muslims and Moors. But they you can see even the so called Christian the dark and Christian ones had to be Christian to be free. They met in Avila and in July Enrique de Duron and put it in his place, his brother and father the twelve. In Colombia, there is a population, Carthage, that has not lost its name. Carthage was, as it known, a city located in the present-day Tunisia that was Islamized in the 7th century. In addition, toponyms <laughs> appear in its environment that could hardly imagine a Spanish discoverer in the 17th century. Antico. Antioch, Antioch, Palmyra, Armenia, and Susa. So basically, she's saying these places definitely ain't even brought there by the Spanish. There are there are many other tests that demonstrate the existence of Muslim presence in America before Columbus. There is no doubt that Islam Islam was there. The King of Portugal himself admits in his conquest the power of the Sharif of Morocco in America. You know, this is what we're talking about when we're dealing with Santo the First, 
see how you look. And we're dealing with kingdoms. And kingdoms and dominions, we ain't had like the state borders like we got today, <laughs> all right? We only had kingdoms, so each kingdom had a king. You see the, the red, the red they've been a city. And that's 1536. But this map from another map that's older than that, like 15 Osap, and they showed that city's already here. And you see right there, Chakwe. That's another word for a sharifi. And you see Rio de Oro, the rubber of gold. And one of the kings of Haven called Morocco. I don't see you on this. But we see Canara, which is like Canary. And that's where you see Tuscaloosa, which ain't up becoming Tuscaloosa. Anyway, but this, what I've been talking about, we only had like kingdom, city states. All these been a state or kingdom. And all these kingdoms in the league and had an emperor that they all been down with, pledge allegiance to. And that's the country of the Florida, we call the South today. Where we at? Let's go through some of the documents that she had in the Rick books. And this, these documents show she been, she been, uh, proving that a lot of American products were coming through the ports of Spain during the time of the discovery, alleged discovery, and after and before. I don't know, but years after when it would be impossible for them to already have business and ports and stuff set up. If you're 15 or 8, right, because it is 1492, you like, you just, like, you know, it should take at least 30 years if you even get anything done. You just fought, you just find, you know what I mean? Yeah, 1513, the power to charge R Rodrigo Basidas and E. Caballero for sales in the Indies. They're talking about the Indies and sales and stuff like that. 1507, the rescue slaves who were taken to Cape Aguirre. And we, we see Cape Aguirre um, out on the map. And that's, you can find maps in the 1600s. You can find maps on the internet that got um, real big exclavos, the river of the slaves. And them um, slaves coming into that port from Spain, from all over um, during the old, old ancient days. <laughs> When there's war, there's captives. All right. Let's go through them quick. All right. Yeah, just the rest of the in 1507. And a lot of time when they had on the record books to go rescue slaves, that been the way to hide the fact they've been coming to Captain Captain Seals too now. Slick shit. 1507 White Bastistas and Caballero took and remained in the recruitment. But they had to rescue slaves though because they were losing wars over here too and that ain't up being captive. 1490 Murkis in Fuerte Fuerte Ventura. And Murky says the purple dye that the Phoenicians were using for the robes and stuff. Rosewood of the Canary Islands. 
And right there, you can see that say Canaria and Crystal. Yellow wax from Hamburg and Berber. Mani Guetta, which is chili pepper. And, um, and that been a real important one too. That she, she says that that's one of the easy ones you can use to prove the presence of early America and records. Manuel Guetta. 1506 sheep, pig, and camels from Tenerife, which is in Colombia. 1478, Africa, Guinea, the gold mine and rescue of Manny Greta and elephant teeth. So they're getting all that out of South America, aka Africa at that time. 26,000 Lord of Firewood for the Tenerife Mo. 1506, 1507, Almaz, Son, and Vijay, which is Cadiz on the side. Apart from the Indies, or Kila. See, that's all that's right here is your records between you over here and over there. Because you got you you got um, ambassadors and stuff all over the place. Just like today, you got like, your ambassadors who got mansions for the United States. Just loving out the countries to deal with the business. And she got these records. Coca de la Mina. So we get Coca from the Mina. And the shells again. Gum. And it written with the Arabic version. <laughs> Qurana and fat. Sugar from Canaria, Madeira, Brazil, and Granada. Canaries of the Indies. Generous, generous of the Indies. So they talk about different. Um, stuff that comes from the Indies on here. Indigo. Alonso de Lugo. And the Grand Canaria sugar. You can start to see around 1490s, the 1490s, and around the 1480s, you can start to see them getting a the real stronghold and stuff against stuff. Clothes, gold, Almazares, Almazares. Getting, they getting <laughs> Islamic stuff from America at this time too. So called quote unquote Islamic. Pastel and indigo. And they writing about it in their books. And listen, Spanish, I mean French, yeah. And that's why we talk about Kakikwe. It's a leader of an indigenous group derived from the tenure word Kasike. And yeah, they got it all over here. Spanish America, Brazil, Spain, Portugal. And that's what they call it in our, look it up in our books. And all right, before we get into Memori Mira Memorians, we're gonna deal with Noble Drali. Uh, he been talking about those people. The rubber now was dredged and made by the ancient pharaohs of Egypt in order to trade, keyword trade, with the surrounding kingdoms. And also the Niger River was dredged by the great pharaoh of Egypt in those ancient days for trade again and it extend eastward from the river now, westward across the great Atlantic. It was used for trade 
and transportation. See? So we're dealing with the ancient Chinese Moses people who we call them the Moors of ancient Egypt, the empire, the Mira Mamolians. They already had all set up. So civilization being set up, so everybody in the world gotta pay arm homage to them. They they like they they like good clothes and good they like commerce and economy. So we're dealing with the uh, he was a general in the Portuguese colony in 1660. He died in 1662, but he'd been even part of the or Knights of the Order of Christ. But you know, Let's see. Just keep an idea that, about how what's going on when we read these stories. That's like a Kikwe. You see him got the Egyptian um, so-called kilt. You see her, she got the stripe, the red and white stripe. That's like the purple on the barbershop pole. All right. And you got a tomahawk. The earring, the loop earring, just like a more. Gotta keep an eye on these these places. Keep of Agua right there. All right, now this uh, got us some more faces and more us. Who you know some sculptures. These people all over the world, America included. It's supposed to be like Italy, but it's all the same. A Malt. The island of Malta is a good connection. The Maltese and the language is a good connection to the ancient world. Some of the, some of the old language still in that. And these modern structures, sculpture, I think, right here. But I like the way just, uh, they represent how, see, that, that's like how we would look at it as Roman, right? Or we could be hearing about Roman stuff, dealing with the Americas in a minute. It's going to look like Roman to, to the Castilians and stuff when they first come. And they always had this damn broom. I gotta go look, see what, I, see what that is. Always had this broom when they got a so-called black um, friar or something like that. And you see this Phoenician chart from this person who write this book. He believed he'd been all over this motherfucker since ancient time. And this right here, again, the scrits. You see the scrits, it's the two pillars. And the guardians of the scrits is Moors. The guardian of the scrits, the guardian of commerce. All right, let's start reading. Okay, Osiris killed, Osiris took Span. Let's start right there. From Geryon, kill him, but gave the throne to his sons. They went to take, to get revenge on Uzair. Osiris and they didn't they didn't kill him but Oro went and slaughtered the Garians to avenge the attack on Osiris. Oro became Hercules of Libya. So that's why we got the screen of Hercules as Gibraltar today. It used to be the screen of Hercules. And that's why Hercules of Libya. Who gave Spain to Hispalo? And that's when we see on mass we got Hispania right there before 711 AD. It's called Hispania because we deal with the ancient times. Then Atlante, the brother of Hispero, sailed from Etruria, conquering Hispania. Hispero came from a Hesperides, a supposed island that was opposite on the other side.
Christian sources remember that in Hispania landed large crowds of foreign people settling on the coast during the period of the Phoenician navigators. They found a green and a cozy land. Pygmalion, king of Tyre, refounder of Gadira, made his fortune rescuing gold and silver copy in Betica in exchange for oil. So basically what, what we're doing is we're going to see who these moors, where these moors really come from. Going all the way back to the mythic shit, the legends, and bring it back to the seven of AD and, and these products that were coming to Europe through Spain, through the scripts since ancient times were already set up from like no draw least to the ancient moors that we got in chapter 47. They ain't never been Ain't never um, but nothing different. They say that Dido, sister of Pygmalion, expatriated to have her own kingdom and star in Carqui Dawn, a factory entire in the kingdom of Tharsis. She managed to have the Tartessian sail her the site of Cambia, a Darian city of 16th century, which was abandoned, built the fortress of Bishra around 814 BC. Dido joined Carquidon with a wall, creating the nucleus of Carthage, tributary city of Argentano. The king who had his capital columns of Orcacolum or brass, at his death, anarchy broke out. Darcy's fragmented into three kingdoms, Carthage, Numidia, and Mauritania. Curious Fernando's, Fernando Fernandez de Oviedo, and he's a historian like, uh, in later times, in like the 1500s, I think, picks up Aristotle's alternate version, which omits the intervention of Dido. Once the Phoenicians settled in Cadiz, certain merchants went into the ocean, hitting the big island, apart from the mainland of Africa not being discovered or inhabited, founded a population. In the metropolis, it is forbidden to publish it for fear that a great nation would be formed which could threaten Phoenicia. So the Phoenicians ain't tell nobody about the Americas because and I don't want people on the other side knowing about it. From that, going back all the way to that time, to the most who can't later do the same thing, they keep it sacred. Argentinian kingdom was fragmented into Tifa, anarchy that took advantage of the Phoenicians to recover Cadiz, so they recover Cadiz. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon ravaged Hispania and annexed it in pursuit of loot. After enough gathering, he abandoned his conquest, leaving Jewish settlers behind. So we can all the characters in the span by the time this thing kick off. Natives squeezed the Phoenicians of Cadiz, who asked for help from Carthage and emerging power. According to Granada sources and anonymous chron chronicler, the leader Anibal, king of Afariqua, Tarsus, and Andalusia sent his general Amnicar. Dominating France first, <laughs> he destroyed the Cadiz fleet, surprised at the bay, occupied the city, the conquest of Hispania continued. So he is going to conquer Brazil, but he asked for help. <laughs> Sagunto, an ally of Rome closed his door to Carthage and the destruction is the origin of the Second Punic War. So the wars with Carthage and Rome really kick off over Hispania and what Hannibal did to Hispania. Rome pressed by, and we really with Rome, we deal with Italy. So, you know, the Italy history is tied into that. The French, all this 
is European history because you're going to have two groups. You have the Moors and you have the Moors of the Holy Roman Empire going at it. <laughs> and that's just how the wars begin. Defending the kingdom, but a Rome pressed by Hannibal, the Senate defended itself by attacking. Scipio landed in Carthage in 146 forced Hannibal to return to Hannibal. The fame of the kingdom, he was defeated in Zama, a place named that evokes the Sama of the Black Skinnaires, which Diego Cal called rescue, the Sama or Zama. Battle scene that Alonso de Lugo, captain of the Little Sea, fought around 1500 crossing the Portuguese Isthmus to Columbus. And that's our first. Um, let me see right here. Sama and rescue. And they had a battle in the 1500s right there. In that place. And, it, and what she's saying is it could have been this, the, also the battle of the old Carthaginian empires on the side too. On the same course, on the other side of Cartagena was Zamba, a place qualified as nonsense by Fernandez de Aguedo because it Ghanaians, it was a black Ghanaian name. So basically this chronicler, this historian, and I want to believe that a place called Zamba was saying right there because he already been associating that with Africa at his time. <laughs> A rascal Carthage, Scipio crossed the friendly kingdom of Numidia to conquer Mauritania. Rome divided into two provinces, Tingitana and Casaria. He merged the three kingdoms of Darsus dismemberment. So they conquered um, Carthage and it became Africa. Kaiser Augusto warning a capital in Africa revolt Carthage. So that's why I always say when you see Africa to meet I know but uh, conquered <coughs> uh, Carthage. Then he conquered Carthage and turned Africa. That's the same thing he did on that side. I believe they did on this side. Um, Grenadian chronicler accused Rome of having brought peace, um, abandoning the Gulfs in Hispania with Quetta, Tangier, and many la many other lands of Africa, quote-unquote, many other lands. In the third century, Alans, Suevos, and Vandals occupied the provinces, and the imp and government generated hunger, misery, and pestilence. So these islands, suevos, and vandals starting to come into the lands and cause destruction and plague and shit. Knowing that the Hispanic side for the return of Rome, Maximo, governor of Carthage, prepared a naval expedition with the intention of reconquering it. Being about to say, say, or one give more in this little piece right here talking about that in the old Spanish records. Being about to say, say, one Gilmore or Gila Mete Rose, friend of King Vandal, Hilderic, according to Muslim sources, liquidated the nobility. Enemy, according to Sedano, imprisoned the Gordo monarchs in Carthage, leaving it in the care of his brother. The sources in which Gilmore became Lord of Africa coincide until Justiano recovered a glimpse of authority wanted to replace the king vassal. So we, we get up to the part where the 7-Eleven come in and say, at the end of the, and we're gonna start right there in 7-Eleven. At the end of the operation put Belisario, captain general of the East, who has stood out in the wars of Persia, you see? So we, now we're dealing with the empire now. But Spain, I believe everybody was buying for Spain, I think, because they look at, they start to look at that street as the center of the world and get from the products from this side to the rest of the world easily through that street. And I think once they find out about that route, the ancient route that we've been talking about from the 
it's a feral setup been obvious for uh, going for even back to the days of so-called Cyrus going to get that spin real quick and put him under vassalage it don't make sense to be that more from this side more from this side would have figured out I don't know that and had control of that because you're dealing with their products and their commerce like Tara said it's the biggest the world greatest estate death of the world greatest estate and that's what we're talking about an estate one of the popes say of whoever got control of the area, they'll be able to subdue Europe and Africa. <laughs> the one who got control of America is this. Damn. With that music getting too loud, but I can try to talk up. Let's get to saving Leo. Africa, Belisario was in a was in a cottage. Gilmore brother dead at the meeting. Gilmore bro, Gilmore's brother dead at the meeting. The general occupied the city, repairing the walls, waiting for the rebels. Gilmore sailed from Sardinia with a great army, camping in front of Carthage to be defeated by Belisario. Belisario. In an exit in the exit with his vandals. The rebel fled inside, according to Muslim sources, with Hilder Rico being caught by Belisario. So you got the mole from the east taking it from the vandals and the Gordo. Since we in Rome to Carthage. We got now we got the Persian coming in. The Spanish chronicles make him a prison as a soldier, attributed to Belisario the recovery of Africa from the for the Empire of the East after 96 days of quarter occupation. Let's see. Back in Constantinople. The general enjoyed triumph in the old style, continued his career in other wars until he was sealed. He was called a cartridge by his captain Solomon, harassed by the Theodoro, Theodoro uprising, pacified the earth, the empire of the east, returned definitely. Man, man, you've been no joke. At Muhammad's death in 1632, Islam was moving west, now being plausible that from, not being plausible that from an Arabian peninsula moderately populated, an army capable of conquering half the world arose. It is reasonable to assume that the conquest of a new creed was spiritual, spiritual or intellectual, which did not prevent it from manifesting itself in a course. What you mean is, even more of an enlightenment of something that already existed almost over the whole world. Just being quantified as something now. In the Chronicles of Lucas du de tu Tui appears armed Saracen with two, 20, 270 sails. They emerge on the Andalusian coast in the reign of Wamba between 672 and 680. So you already got the Saracens coming through before 780. Carthage was received by the Arab Abulamek, the praetor of Benzentine, 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 I could probably spell that wrong, but I think it's Benzentine, asked Constantinople for help. So, we all should know the history of Benzentine uh, ruling in Egypt. And then the Islamic 
father's coming in here. You know. When he did not receive it, he surrendered in 698. From here, the power of Islam spread over Numidia and the two Mauritanians. Julian or Julian, Count of Quetta, Carthaginia, and Espartaria, Lord of Algeciras and Governor of Andalusia, according to Muslim sources, did not rise for having violated King Rodrigo to his daughter. He sought help in Islam because he preferred submit to virgin power to endure the tyr tyranny of, God, of the Gulf reactionaries. <laughs> Embarking in Algeciras, he went to Ifriquia, where he met Musa, governor of the Caliph of Damascus, conqueror of Tangier and their scream Sus. Prudent the Muslim, he, he sent to Spain Tariq ben Ziyad, Chaldean or Berber from the tribe of Nasda, a recent convert to emerge to observe the mood of the population. According to the Old Chronicles, he crossed the sea between Ju July and August of 707, camping in Gibraltar. He soon captured half of Andalusian nobles. The Chronicle of Pedro I ratified the first version. Musa Chaldean Arabic entrusted the conquest of Spain to the Berber Tarif and embarked on Al Mar. He chose Gibraltar as the port of arrival so as not to harm al Kiras, the town of Julian. The people of Archbishop Opus joined the Muslims. They went against Rodrigo, defeating him in Yanda, April 20th, 711, by abandoning of his own people. The word beyond, the place from which Musa troops departed, designated two different coasts. It was said that the port of al Kiras in the Strait was the closest to the coast of beyond to the other port, other part, the beginning of the province in which the 7,000 alpha quests, which that, that's the um, alphabets are the, these Cordoba nobles of um, old Cordoba who've been um, like the lawyers, like masters in the law. So they get kicked out in, around 800. So in 818, they founded phase and that, that's the, um, the first, the one over here, the 818 one. Well, we get into the Mira Memorial, I don't know if it'll be this video, but we're gonna, they're gonna be ones who rule both sides of the, start, start seeing them pop up. Abin Yusuf, Morocco's first king of the Marines or Beni Marines dynasty, embarked on al Mar, had to pass the sea to take possession of al seated by the king of Granada. On land he harangued his men, promising that since they went beyond sea kingdoms, they would win them that sea to meet the al of Morocco in the new village of Fez founded in Alamar in the 13th century by the second king of Benin Marine. So what she basically saying is that they've been coming from this side, saying let's go over here and win some kingdoms over in Spain at this time, 711. <laughs> they've been found in the places that they already had, like Morocco and Fez and stuff like that, that they already had on this side. The army of Alfonso the Knife persecuted the one, uh, one of the king of Morocco abandoning for having exhausted the pantry without arriving at the ports of Tigris and Bedis. They were al Mar, which has not happened of being on the other side of the narrow. In the Chronicle of Pedro I, it is said that Spain was lost from sea to sea with Africa, which was in al Mar. 
recording Mio said significant victory of Rodrigo Diaz de Vicar in Valencia over 36 Moorish kings from Alamar. The day procured 3,000 gold friends among the day of Bukhar, king of Alamar and Morocco, and then, which would have been hum dealing, when they use that term, then dealing with one side of the world. They dealing with both sides of the Atlantic. And they started to use the term out of Mar and her record, she started to figure that out. That they ain't been looking at it as we look at the maps today. These moors, the kings of these places. And another side note before we get into the thing. In 1288, Sancho IV authorized Guzman el Bueno to export 300 wheat and barley cockets cockets to take them to Alamar do L S. The place adverb indicate the place name in maps of America in the 16th and 17th century. There is a Punta de Allende, Allende for the Portuguese, which those kids, Alfonso de Chavez, entered the 16th century at one there, one there, south latitude next to the first cross, which marks the border of the first island or of Guinea with Brazil. The San Miguel of Del. De Allende Mexican did not acquire a certain surname by chance. So basically she was just explaining the same thing I'm explaining that Adam Mar, even in the Spanish been they were still using that term to talk about the side because they ain't had no name for it. At the civil war between the Goths, which lasted three years, and she and basically she's saying that in her wreck is dealing with trade between the Americas and Spain, they use the term Alamar and also in the history of the Moors in the conquering of Spain, the so-called conquest of Spain in 1711, the term Alamar being used in the official books. And some of the old stories that written in these other in these old Spanish languages. I won't try to get to the first mirror of my Morgan before I cut him. At the civil war between the Goths, which lasted three years according to the Chronicles, ruled the Cordova Emir, or advance of the soldiers of Babylon, in whose name he could collect the taxes, altered the Islamic world in 729 by confronting with three bands between Arabs, Berbers, and Syrians. So we 729. Abu Abbas took advantage of the chaos to eliminate the Umayyad family, weakening the power of Damascus. In 757, a Cordovan Abderrahman, supposed survivor of the lineage, declared the independence of the emirate, reducing the authority of the caliph to the realm of spiritual. Following year, he founded Mint, the adoption of Roman monetary system revealed its roots. Lucas de Toy mentioned a Yuka, a contemporary of al Agat Muget Al Udami of the Abbasid faction. He made him disbark in Andalusia around 762, leading Yemeni troops imported from Ifriqiya. Damascus sent to reduce him to General Al Mansur. Yuka cut off his head, sent it to the king. So we got the walls between the walls. We got the east and the west, all vying for Spain. Andalus at this time. At that time, the Zenatis landed in Morocco, coming in from the south of the Atlas, which in terms of classical geography does not imply that the south was in the same continent, you see, with carriers of gold, sweet cane, and eggplant. In 822, Alaquim the I of Cordoba increasingly separated from the east created an irregular army of Berbers, perhaps as a result of inexplicable Viking Tarascadas. The Nordic ladder in the Quadra Guivir, 
Quiver, Guado Quiver, as customary to water, caulk their ships in the Orcada before crossing the clay of the Liaches in the year 844, they climbed the river. In 852, so we're moving forward, reign Edward II and Seuss Tremekin, Al Raji, and Tangiers. Al Abdirahman II was elected Emir of Cordoba. So you know we're starting to get to the the Moors who got kingdoms on both sides with Edris II. Understanding that the future was as he he bought Atrazanas in Tavo and Camona. Around 912 he a date to be quarantined as many records the chronicle a CE defeated the Ephronis at Al Sus, conquering Ephraquil. We're going to stop it right here.